Yo yo, welcome to a full Hearthstone Battlegrounds guide regarding the early game. In this video we'll cover everything from your economy, leveling, game plan, board setup, all you need to know to master the first couple turns in the game. If you don't want to miss the mid game and the late game guide, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. It also just helps me out a lot for the time and effort that I put into these. So let's start with the most important question we should ask ourselves. What is our game plan? A pretty good analogy I'll make during this 3 part series is with chess. Because in chess people learn different openers. You have the Evans Gambit, the Rio Lopez, the Sicilian defense. As white you basically have opening tactics and as black you study ways to respond to those. Some openers are aggressive, some are slow, but there are a couple opening principles like developing. You want to put your pieces into play and bring the king to safety by castling. Okay enough about chess, how does this apply to battlegrounds? Basically you need to know what all the best openings are in battlegrounds. What are the strongest units on tier 1, tier 2, what openers do we have. There's also basic principles like economy and tempo that you have to master. How do you reply to what Bob has to offer? Most chess openers set you up in a good position so you can battle it out in the mid game. This is exactly what you should also focus on in Battlegrounds early game. Leveling. I'm going to briefly touch leveling because I already made a full in-depth guide about it so if you're having trouble with this then I suggest that you check that one out. But in essence we level to find stronger units on our board but mainly to find direction as early as possible and scale. Make sure you're familiar with the normal leveling curve, the rough farm curve and other hero specific curves. If Bob offers you really bad things, don't forget that you always have the option to take power levels as well. Basically just make sure you don't fall behind on the lobby and that you spend your gold leveling efficiently. Economy, let's talk about that now. So everyone gets the same amount of gold every turn unless you have a special hero power. So whoever makes the best use of this gold is just gonna win games. Simple. Especially early game economy matters a lot because everyone starts out with so little. That's why floating gold or roll is a huge waste that will likely make you fall behind on others. Be sure to map out every turn and use your gold as efficiently as possible to buy as many units as possible, of course, while leveling up. Because economy is so important, the value of tokens, elementals and gamblers goes up. Most noteworthy, your 5 gold turn gets so much better if you just get a token on turn 1 because suddenly you don't have to waste 2 gold but get to sell a 1-1 for another 2 star unit. In the end, we try to get the biggest bang for our buck, meaning we don't want to waste any money, buy the biggest dude or invest into more economy. Now comes probably the most straightforward tip but a very important one. Listen up. Tempo. It's very simple. What is the most amount of stats that you can get for the gold that you have available and what the shop has to offer? You kind of have to rewire your brain into seeing everything as raw stats. For example, if this is your board and this is your shop then the raw maximum amount of stats I can buy this turn is this. Because the stronger you are, the less damage you will take and the greedier you can play in the mid game. The next point is picking up pairs. I think most people are familiar with the concept of pair gaming in order to hit a triple into something good. But the most common question I get is when is something bait and how long do I hold on to some pairs? Battlegrounds isn't very black or white and there's no one solid answer because so much depends on your next opponent, your health, how strong you are, what hero you are, the tribes in the lobby. What I can do is give you general advice that you have to apply to your own situation. A pair is bait when you think you'll lose too much health without even getting much stronger. For example, I have a triple tide color in the shop on turn 3, 5 gold. I'd have to buy one, float to gold and freeze the other one and then next time you buy it and triple into a 3 star. Having spent 6 gold total on 2 more tide colors for a 3 star is probably not stronger than just getting to 2 stars. I also had to float 2 gold so probably could have just sold my tide color for another stronger unit. So this one was clearly baits. Now how long do you hold on to pairs? This one again depends on how strong the pair is. If it's double party elemental or double spawn you can have them around for a bit if you know you're strong. But if they're two micro mummies and it's turn 9 already and you might die in two turns if you don't sell them for something way stronger in your shop then obviously it's time to let them go. So to recap your health is mainly your resource here so it's up to you to figure out if you have to spend some of it and if it will be worth it. A final general tip I want to give regarding pairs is that if it's possible, you want to freeze triples in your shop and level up. Going for a tier 4, tier 5 or even tier 6 unit depending on what tribes are in the lobby and what kind of direction you're looking for. Let's talk about a board setup now. I made a full guide on positioning already which I recommend you check out if you need help with that. So instead I want to cover some early game specific board strategies. Number one is that you want to go wide instead of tall. I must never do any of these units stick around until the late game so buffing up units isn't ideal since you're going to end up selling them eventually. Also going wide means that you get more economy, more money if you sell your things. 
If you roll a spawn, you'll also get more value, and by having a bit of everything, your options always stay open. You can go Menagerie, Max, Dragons, whatever. Number two is that you shouldn't value Synergy too much. Sure, a pack leader grandma combo is pretty cute, but once again in a couple turns, you might have to sell one of the two. If you get baited into too much Synergy and start picking up all the beasts, you'll be trapped in this strong beast composition for now, but a really shitty beast comp late game. You have no more flexibility or options, you can't really sell your stuff off or you'll get way too weak and die. And if, in this case, you don't find the mama bear, you're screwed. I'm not saying some synergy is bad, if it's the most stats you can put on the board, sure. Just be careful of not falling into a tunnel vision. And tip number three is to like the video and you'll instantly become a top 200 player. <laughs> That's a pretty shitty plug, but it literally takes one click and helps me out immensely when it comes to the YouTube algorithm. I really appreciate it. Of course, I have to mention that some heroes have very specific early games. As always, I can't cover every hero in depth in this guide for obvious reasons. Just be aware that heroes who get extra economy like Omu and Lich Bazial have an early game that's a bit different from most, but all the same principles in this video still apply. So don't float gold, max out your economy, level properly, buy stats and so on. There's also heroes that cheat tempo, like Maleficent and Curator. With extra tempo comes the option to be greedier and take more pairs, level more, stuff like that. But there's a lot of heroes that cheat both tempo and gold, like Elise, Yogg, Milhouse. Keep the opening ideas in mind for these ones. And finally, there's also heroes that will be good with specific compositions or units, like George who wants Poison Murloc, so your aim is to be strong and level to tier 4. Or Jaraxxus who wants to go Demons, so stays on tier 1 very often. Or Maleficent again, who likes mostly tier 3 and 4 to pick up strong mechs. So evaluate what you're looking for and use that to help you with your decision making in these early turns. And those were most of the tips that I could come up with. In a few seconds I have a sweet example early game ready. It shows perfectly what your first couple turns should look like and what to think about. This game is taken from my gameplay channel so if you want to see more examples like these you can always head over there. The mid game and late game guides are hopefully dropping in a couple days unless you're watching this from the future. Sure, then you can already check them out. Don't forget to subscribe and leave down below what you think were the most helpful tips or tips that you have for others or maybe what you struggle with most with the early game and then maybe I can help you out even more. And now let's head into the game. If I'd come the sprint I'd rather have this buff than this but this is... You never win? No I did win. I played them twice. One was the first place and the other one was bottom four. In one game I rolled Competa Sp Spirit and the other one I didn't. Guess which one. <laughs> So, let's see what the shop is. Mm, I mean, I'm looking at both this and this, but I'm also looking at leveling. This is strong now, this is potential. I guess Lich King will take this, deal some more damage. I'll take the Weaver, because I think it just... Strong now, but I don't care. We should win the fight anyway. It's because we're gonna hear power every turn. And if you're staying on one longer, it has to be Weaver. Yeah, I took the tree tree snakes because we deal more damage now. Yep, level. Yeah, I don't know if it uh, went to level and went not. I think our farm curve works, so I'll, I'll stick with it. Are there secrets? Yes, yes, there's one secret that's worth it, which is um, Competa Spirit, this one, is nuts. It's like a it's like a permanent spawn on your board that you hit. Uh, you don't even have to buy a spawn, it's like one gold for a spawn that you do it doesn't have to pop. Very tempting, I think I'll roll though. Why the hell did I roll? <laughs> God damn it. Don't buy bad units. If they keep you alive, then are they really bad units, huh? So we'll lose this fight because it's no house. With a triple already. I didn't even notice. This, this guy's a salty looter already. The guy. Ugh, give me a break, man. <laughs> Taking seven damage on turn three. Wow. Only a millhouse can do that. Okay. Double salamental. Interesting. We got another hyena. Never the plus one plus one spell. Uh, gold or recruits? 
Gold does it help me? Does the gold ever help me? Because I'll probably buy the hyena here because it's a bear. Um, I'll take the gold. It's probably going to be useful at some point. Not a competitive spare. Don't mind if I do. Is there a way that I can get both of these? Yes, but no. I think I'd rather have the bear here and just be like nutty strong. 24 HP turn 4. I mean, Lich Baziel can also just. Uh... Oh, wait, Befits a ghost! This, this guy deceived. I didn't even notice. Okay. That sucks. Like, if there's a ghost in the lobby, the dynamics change completely because people get free power levels. The strongest people never get to power level, and the weak people get to power level. So, the weak people in the early game, including myself, will be able to spike much harder than the, the people that are actually strong. Because we get, like, once in a while a ghost and just level to 6 for free, for example. Well, these guys are strong now, but late game they, they can't compete with that. Mm. I'll get an ice block up. So we probably level here. This guy tripled, fuck's sake. <laughs> I mean, we probably level. I wonder if we just sell, use gold and buy something. That seems like such a waste. Or I wonder if we stay down and buy too, because this guy's crazy strong. We can get this and this. We're behind on leveling by one turn, but I assume we face the ghost soon. You guys also staying down. If you're going demons, it's okay to stay down. I mean, I don't want to commit to it though. Mm, I think I want to stay down. I feel too weak. Because people are like, so many people have triples already. This guy just tripled. This guy has a triple. And then Janus, oddly enough, doesn't have a triple yet. This guy is an early looter. So, in order to not fall behind, like, I need to make up with tempo. Then we just level, and then next turn maybe face the ghost again and we can level again. Guy got a bulwark. And the hero part spawn, of course. Hero part spawn is so broken. Man. This might be winnable actually, because uh, like these boys, yeah, actually a win. Or a tie. Oh no, it's still a win. Nice. The nutty hyenas. Alright, if we um, lose to Georgia, we probably face the ghost again next turn. I think. Competitive sprint, thank you. Get the second spawn. It's kind of awkward, right? We can get the second spawn. We can also roll, use our pocket change that we still have in hand. Is spawn even making me stronger? Because this buffs both hyenas. It's also just a bear. I think so, because um, if we hit the triple next to we can just level get it. Doesn't mean it's not possible though. The odds are higher than with Daryl, I think. Uh, this guy's a golden weaver and a watcher, so I guess we're not going demons, huh? I guess we're not going demons. He hits. The nuts. Oh yes, two triples. Yes, of course. Why not? Why not? <laughs> two triples. Yeah, sure. Will both not pop as well? No, because uh, Death Rattle Striker three times it deals four damage. So it leaves at one HP. And now we win because we put a death rattle boat here and we deal lethal. Big brain. <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding, but yeah. We, we got first in Akazan's right?